Hey, y'all. Wow, the word for this week so far, well, we're only at Tuesday, but the word for this week so far seems to be rights. <laughs> um, uh, a comment from Johnnyx7078 in response to my uh, Nanny Gun State video made me, made me think about um, the definition of rights. And his comment, and this is, this is definitely a realistic and the state of affairs that we're in, uh, the comment said that most legal scholars will disagree on my definition of the word right. You know, like, uh, you know, I have a right to defend myself. I have a right to keep and bear arms. I have a right to be secure in my person and my property. However, uh, a what what Johnny Eck alludes to, however, is that a a legal scholar or a lawyer will say, well, the right has to do with being granted an ability, you know, either through licensure or whatever. And that's the reality that we live in today. And this brings me to shall not be infringes uh, thing about property rights. What I would like to talk to is uh, something that for some bizarre reason we never seem to bring up enough, in my opinion, and that is uh, the Ruby Ridge incident. In my research of that, it was over a border dispute with his neighbor that that caused the, the persons involved in the Ruby Ridge to become a person of interest. And then we had a, a setup and entrapment of a federal agent. And then in response to and in response to a person, an individual missing a court date, they send in the uh, FBI's HRT. And you know, everybody knows the story about how it goes downhill from there. You know, one of his sons kills an FBI dog, they run into the agents out on the property who are merely in camouflage, not identifying themselves as officers, so on and so forth. That was all originally over a, a land dispute with his neighbor, believe it or not. You know, if you're, if you're in bad with your neighbors, there is, there are so many tools that the system, call it what you will, the system, the matrix, they, them, the law can bring to bear to screw you over because there's so many words written in so many books that there's an actual profession centered around a person who can research those books and find out where somebody wrote down on a piece of paper, oh yes, this circumstance and that circumstance means this and that, and then you get a jury that just goes, uh-huh, yep, that's what that means. You know, you say, uh, the freedom of speech shall not be infringed. And then the next sentence out of somebody's mouth is, and this is what that means. <laughs> Come on now. I don't, I don't really need anybody to explain to me what it means. And, um, you know, you take a, you take a circumstance from, uh, you take a circumstance from, between two people where feelings are involved or, you know, somebody just likes being bossy. For example, um, Mike's neighbor who likes their view of the ocean that'll be inhibited if the, if the one guy puts up a garage. You take a situation where the situation is subjective, meaning it has to do with people's opinions, uh, perceptions of value and things like that and wants, and you put it towards the blind legal system. And the system even um, even brags with itself about being blind. You know, you have the um, you have that system where you show that that lady that lady law. You know, she's got the blindfold on with a little scale, and you know, that's it. Have a nice day. <clears throat> At the risk of uh, getting religious, now don't don't take me the wrong way here, but. The way that it's supposed to run, and this is for you Christians out there, it says that if you have a conflict with your brother, you know, settle it before you get to court. 
And it's almost as if that age-old wisdom says, you know, these rules and regulations are blind and they're established based on, on things that have happened in a different case. What would happen, for example, if everybody in Mike's neighborhood did somehow get along? You know, they're all obviously appreciative of the ocean and they like having their, their place. And, and that one neighbor went to the other person with their hat on their hand and said, listen, um, if you put up this garage, it'll block my view of the ocean. Now, I understand that, you know, some folks will just be like, yeah, I will go, go pound sand, pal. I'm doing what I want. It's my property then what can you do at that point? But surely a compromise could be made if it were, if it would be that important. Um, and if the lady were absolutely honest and said, instead of like, oh, it's storm runoff, even though you have all these other garages that have similar circumstances, uh, you, uh, you say, well, this this particular structure will have an adverse effect on the value of my property, and I'm afraid that I will require uh, due compensation because something on your property is somehow overlapping the value of my property. Just some thoughts out there. I know I'm I'm rambling some, but uh, I just wanted to to get get people thinking a little bit about about the the neighbors, so to speak, and. Um, and how your relationship with your neighbor can very much affect and be mutual beneficial to both your freedom as well as theirs. Just my thoughts on it, and um, y'all take care.